Hello and welcome. I'm Riversoft Art, and I'm excited to talk to you today about an upcoming product. It's a collaboration between Half Life and myself called Reflection Designer. I don't know if you're like me, but I really love using reflections and images. I, I use them to tell a story, whether it's to um, show something that's not in the image, that's off the screen, so to speak, or to give a different viewpoint. So instead of showing this woman's face directly, I think it's much more interesting to show her reflected in the mirror. Reflection Designer is designed to make that really easy, really precise, and to really give you control of your reflections. Daz Studio can occasionally make it difficult to do this, and Reflection Designer makes it incredibly easy. So you can do things like reflect this woman's face in the mirror. You can set the camera so we can see this woman on the compute, uh, commuter train and see her reflection in the window. See this man's face in this chrome skull. Or even see lights so that they are precisely placed to give you reflections in the scene. This image is a great example of uh, what I was talking about, of showing you things off the scene. So this is something that we can't see. But by putting this light in her eye, it tells a story. We see she's scared of something, and with this glow, you start wondering, oh, is this is dragon fire, or is this explosion, or whatever. I really love using reflections for these type of things, and Reflection Designer makes it really easy. So let's get to using it. So I'm in DAS Studio. We just have a simple ball with a uh, surface, a reflective surface on it. Let me turn it to eye ray so you can see it. It's just a simple uh, actually paint color with the uh, default HDRI uh, providing the lighting. Uh, with Reflection Designer you got four icons. You have one that brings up the manual. There's a reflection, then there's three scripts, reflection designer move camera, reflection designer move reflection, and reflection designer itself. <clears throat> so let's start with the reflection designer script. So this script is designed to create a light, either a spotlight or a mesh light, a plane that will reflect off a surface and directly into your current view or camera to show what a you know to show that light so how do you use it well you select your object and then you bring up the geometry editor tool and you change you make sure it's polygon selection and then you use that to click a polygon where you want the reflection in your object. So for this, I want to create a light that's going to reflect off of this spot on the sphere and into our uh, view. So I've selected the object, selected the polygon, and I start, start the uh, script. At the top of the script, you're given a bunch of different presets, uh, some amazing stuff created by Half-Life. In the reflection light planes, you're given things from automotive overhead lights to a convergence ring to some fl fluorescence to some windows, you know, lights coming through windows, um, and to stripes. There's also some very interesting ones like a, uh, a window. So in this case, we have the window plus the scene behind it. This is to help you have a ref or to show a reflection that you can see that there oh there's a window off screen uh, that's showing the outdoors or it's showing that uh, we're in some type of park or that we're in the city. These are very helpful for giving you that off screen environment, if you will. Now, if you have Lighting Designer, also a collaboration between Half-Life and myself, you'll also see its lights, both plain mesh lights and spotlights, here as different tabs. So Reflection Designer gets even more powerful with, when you pair it with Lighting Designer. 
So let's get started. So we've we've selected that polygon here and we want to show a light right at that polygon. So we just select one of the presets and the script will create it and it's actually created it up here if you can barely see. Now with Lighting Designer you can actually change the distance that this plane, this mesh light is. So you can get it just off the camera or as close as you want. In this case I'll have it just off the camera. Now if you notice you don't see a reflection. We can turn on the eye ray preview and see the, uh, the new light created there. Uh, you can also change the luminance, uh, how much light it's broadcasting. So let's crank this way up so just so you can see it. And you can see this is supposed to be an automotive overhead. It's got a couple, uh, four panes of windows, and, or four lights. And uh, here we have the luminance up. We can change the temperature. This is just like in DAS. It's specified by Kelvin. And 6500 being a neutral sunlight. If you do less than that, you get warmer colors, redder colors, yellower colors. If you do more than 6500, you get cooler, bluer lights. You can also change the color directly. And um, you can also change the scale of the light. So right now it's 100%. We could make the plane smaller. Uh, so this changes the amount of light coming off the surf it, because it's based upon the surface area it changes the amount of light coming off so you may want to change your luminance if you change the scale let's reset that um, other controls so let's move it in so you can see the this fill light this plain light you can actually um, and I'm going to turn off the eye ray because sometimes uh, the recording doesn't capture this uh, properly. So if I turn off the aim, I can use these auto aim. I can use these different controllers to move the light and all three axes. I happen to like auto aim that aims at the light precisely at that polygon. Um, other things you can do. You can use the camera to see the scene. See how you've placed it. And if you hit accept, this this camera view is lost. It goes back to what you know it's supposed to be. Or you can reset the camera. So if you bring it, let's put that back there and hit accept. So now we have this beautiful light in here. And we can also, um, Half-Life has done an amazing job and he's made these incredible shaders with lots of configurations. So for this one, you can change things like the number of rows. So there's four rows, a number of columns. You can change the, the kind of the width between the column rows. etc. You need to experiment. Uh, all of his uh, shaders have some amazing properties to change them. So this, you see how easy it was to make a light that precisely reflects off and we can see it in our scene as a reflection on this object. So I'm going to delete this and change it back to iRay. All right. Um, now I'm going to show you the other two scripts, the Move Camera and the Move Reflection. For this, you need another um, object in the scene. So we're going to load up uh, Glum Gurgle, the golem-like golem -like character. Takes a, most, a moment to load. So how, uh, I'll start with Move Reflection, how that works. So basically that moves the object that you want to have a reflection of, the reflected object, so it's precisely, precisely placed so you can see it as a reflection in the other object. So 
I've brought Glum Gurgle in. Let's change to the perspective view just really quickly. And, uh, and let's pose him. So let's add, let's have him crouching. It's my precious. So here we go. Here's a good one. So uh, there he is. So what we want to do is let's go back to our camera. So we want to see him reaching with his hand and see that reflection of his hand close to this ball. So what you do is you select the uh, the polygon as you did with the other script and then you select the object that you want to reflect off of it. So for this I want to actually have the uh, hand and not just the whole body. Um, I want the hand to be the part that's closest. So let me change back to the universal tool. Select the hand. So you select the, the object you want the reflection on, then you select the reflected object, and then you start the move reflection script. And it immediately moves the hand so it would reflect off of that. So let's see it really quickly. It's a little bit hidden by this thing. And by default, it doesn't actually rotate the figure or anything. So you can actually, and I'm, uh, you can actually rotate the reflected object. So it's exactly as you want. I think I went the wrong way. Let's try that. Yeah, there's the hand. Now, just like the other um, script, you can change the distance. So we can push them off the screen. Now you may not be seeing this clearly in the uh, with the iRay preview on in the video, so I'm going to adjust this a little bit, and I'm going to move the camera so I can see this scene again. Yeah, see he's not lined up well at all. Let me turn him. There we go. So I'll reset the camera. So if we turn on the preview again, hopefully you'll be able to see this. You know, and there it is. So this may not work best for figures because, you know, he's like hovering in the air. Uh, but it depends on what you want. Uh, like with that, uh, um, this one, I actually used this script and the woman is actually like her legs are floating out in air. But since it's such a tight uh, focus on her, you can't actually see that. Um, oh, and I should mention you can also change the scale of the object. So by default, it brings in the scale. But if we wanted to make him much bigger compared to the uh, this marble, so in essence the marble appears smaller, we could do that. And just doing that, we start losing the, you know, you stop seeing him on the ground. But anyway, this is one way you can set this up. Uh, and that's using the move reflection. Now, a lot of times you don't want to move it. So let's undo this. And let's take Mr. Glum Gurgle and move him. And I'm going back to the perspective view so I can see. And I want to set him up 
So he's basically exactly what I want. He's sort of reaching towards it. And uh, I'm actually going to use my look at me scripts to have him look at the sphere. So look at that. Just move his head. There we go. Um, so I've set up this screen, uh, uh, this scene exactly as I want. Now what I want to do is move my camera so that I see him exactly. Let me change back to the geometry tool. So I see him, uh, I see him, his hand reflected at this point. So the camera has to move somewhere to be exact. I don't want to move the figure. I want to move the camera. So you use it the same way. You select the polygon on the sphere. You select using the control, hold down the control key and left click, get the hand. And then with the reflection designer, you start the move camera script. So this immediately moves the camera so that the reflection of his hand is directly on that. And um, I, I'm going to turn off the iRay preview because it can't keep up with this. You can also move the camera. So you can move the camera closer or farther away from the reflection point. You can move it left or right. And with this auto aim, it's always going to aim at that uh, polygon, which may not be what you want. You may lose um, the reflection. But you can move these left, right, up, down, in and out, and auto aim. And then you click accept. Let's go back to IRA preview. And that's perfectly what I want. So as you can see, between the three scripts and the different shaders and uh, different lights, you can precisely set up reflections in your scene. Uh, I hope you like this video. I hope you'll love uh, Reflection Designer. And of course, you know, I'm available to answer any questions on the forums. Um, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you have a great day.